Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Max Binder, and I love startup companies. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of my experiences with them, and hopefully by the end you'll give them some of your time and consideration. Now, I wanted to, I've worked at startup for the past few summers, and I wanted to work at a green startup company in Los Angeles this summer. So I cold called a bunch of people. I got a job at a, at a company that was retrofitting gas engines to become hybrid electric vehicles. Exciting, exciting company. And the first day that I show up at the job, the and then the first thing that the boss says to me is, you're not going to be working on the project for the first day. You're going to be doing what I like to call Lemonade Stand 101. <laughs> lemonade Stand 101. What my mandate for the first day was to, it was to set up, set up some kind of method and, and make as much money as possible selling parking at, in our parking lot for the company. So we were about a block from Venice Beach, beautiful location, and this parking lot was completely unused. So I had to make as much money as possible and set up some con concrete processes for how it would be done. So I made some signs, $5 parking, undercutting the place around the corner that was selling legitimate parking spots. And I decided that it would be too much of a liability if I got behind the wheel and started valet parking people, based on past experiences. <laughs> and I, I, uh, I made a liability waiver that went into people's cars saying that we weren't responsible for any damage that the cars incurred while they were parked in the parking lot. And I was ready to go. Let me make stand 101. It's going to be easy. So I sat down, I set up shop, and about half the space is gone in half an hour. I decided to uh, up the prices. So I ran inside, I printed out a bunch of more prices, $10, $15, $20, and I ran outside. And I don't know how much business I lost in that time, it didn't really matter, but I wasn't prepared for a price increase. So that was the first lesson that I learned that day, pretty quickly into the day. Now, uh, the, the boss came out. And just to check on me, and I said, boss, why don't we why don't we put a time limit on how long people are allowed to park there? Let's say three hours, you know, just so we can turn it over a little faster, make a little more money. And he responded by quoting Al Pacino's character in Scarface. He said, "Don't be a hazard." <laughs> hazard is Yiddish for pig, and that basically said, "Don't be a pig." Now, I would have put a pig up on the on, on the uh, on the screen, but due to swine flu pandemic, I don't want to scare anybody in here. So. <laughs> You know, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, so the day went on. I was charging, I got up to $25. I was charging $25 for a space, and people were paying it. It was so close to the beach. It was beautiful, beautiful parking. And um, this family of five came by at the, at the end of the day, towards the end of the day, to park their car. And they had an SUV, and I didn't really have such a good space left. It was a little tiny space, and they parked their car, and they were hanging out in the street a little bit. But I said, whatever, it's an extra $25, you know, it adds the revenue for the day. I was already up to about $1,000. And so I let them park there. A little while later, an elderly couple came by, and they scolded me for creating a dangerous situation in the street. Now, as if someone reminiscent of my grandmother telling me that I should be ashamed of myself wasn't bad enough, they also called the police. So the police come to me, and they, they attempt to tow the car. I tried to delay them and beg them not to tow the car. And thankfully, I delayed them long enough that this nice family came back from the beach. They were able to move their car. And it only resulted in a $250 fine for the day, right out of the revenue that I, that I had collected. So I felt that the boss would be mad. Uh, but we, so we sat down at the end of the day, and we talked about it, and we figured out what worked, what didn't work, and we set up some concrete processes that we would put down on paper that the guy who we would hire for the, next, for the, for the rest of the couple weeks to do it, we, we, you know, we would, he would know how to do it. So this is why I love startup companies. It's because there's no better place to try something new and to fail and to figure out what went wrong and try again. You know, there, there, there's always room to learn. And uh, it, really, what the principles behind it are that you have to have the guts to try something new, you have to have the courage to fail and to try again, and you have to have you have to be able to roll with the punches while you're there in the trenches or in the parking lot, so to speak. So I find that these are some of the main principles for entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurial world. Now, unfortunately, this is a world that is. Now, this is a world that's so vast and white with opportunity, but unfortunately, students like you don't know much about it. Now, 
there seems to be this notion of following the path. You know, you have to go get the best grades possible. You have to apply to the biggest companies and get the best internships possible. And you know, hopefully, if you maintain your GPA, you know, you, you, you'll 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 have this, this internship, and hopefully, these people will offer you a job at the end of your college career. Now, this is a perfectly legitimate way to go about your life and your education. And I, I acknowledge myself that someday I may work for one of these big companies. But one thing I do realize is that I'm still in the education portion of my life. And I will contend to you today that you will learn more working for a startup company for a summer than you will ever as an intern at some gigantic company. Now, it can be a little daunting for me to say this. How do you get into the world of startup companies? You know, there's no list of the big, of the many, the plethora of, of startup companies that exist right here in Montreal. There's no list at the career center so that you can go and apply to them. So how do you get involved in this world? Well, it starts with networking. Uh, I, th there are a ton of networking events that occur on a monthly basis right here in Montreal. Uh, th they're, they're fantastic places for, you know, listening to how people present their ideas, listening to their elevator pitches, there, there are great places for you to give some of your ideas and to get some feedback. Also, you, it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity for you to get business cards and, and, and maintain these contacts for future opportunities. Uh, I was at a networking event a few weeks ago, and one, two students, one from Concordia and one from McGill, were talking about their business idea. They were saying how they had all of the, you know, the lawyers in place, the shareholder agreement, the business plan, they had a plan for how they were going to get revenue. They just needed a guy or a, a girl to, uh, to, to do the test stuff, to get the prototype ready and, and, and up and running. A guy across the room says, hey, my friend is working on that exact same business idea, and he has the tech part figured out. He just needs the business side of things done. So that's a match made in heaven right there. And I'll tell you, these connections and these matches, they occur all the time, in person or even online with a much broader audience. There are so many social networking sites out there where you can have access to key people, and you can you can cold call them, you can send them an email, you can ask them about their company, and you can even ask them for jobs for the summer. They want to hear from you, and the, and and they want to hear your ideas, and you should get out there and start and start talking to them and networking. Now these conversations have led me to invaluable learning experiences. I remember one summer, a few summers ago, I was cold calling for a marketing company. And I, it was my they were, they were they were trying to get their doors in the in, they were trying to get their feet I'm sorry in the doors of some of the Fortune 100 food and beverage companies. So it was my job to call the marketing directors, the brand managers, a lot of the business people at these huge huge conglomerate food and beverage companies, and to to cold call them and to try and get meetings for our sales directors with them. Now many of you who know me, so I see some familiar faces in the crowd, know that I'm a personable guy. I I'm an extrovert. Trying to sell on the phone is completely, completely different. I sounded like a 13-year-old girl at her, at her first middle school dance. I was stuttering on the phone. I was giving my home phone number instead of, <laughs> instead of the office's phone number for the contact. It was just horrible. But you know what? Startup companies are such a close-knit environment. They're such a tight community that they, everyone was working to help me you know, get the job done. They heard every phone call that I did, and they gave me advice, and they gave me pointers. And soon enough, I was doing really well. I, I even finagled a conversation with the chief marketing officer of a company that may, of a, of a beverage company that many of you probably drank this beverage already today. So it's it's this environment in these startup companies. It's really something you know that that's that's special. It's it's really what they they want young motivated students like you, tech enthusiasts to come in there and to, to accept lots of responsibility and to just get the job done. And this is what makes the learning so effective in this environment. It, and it's so intense, it, it, you know, it's fast paced, it's quick, there's high levels of responsibility and, and it makes the learning, the education, this environment so powerful. So I, I, uh, I, 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 I had a great experience there and I'll tell you the best part about working in startup is that the CEO's office is right down the hall. Now, this is a serial entrepreneur who's done some really phenomenal stuff at the forefront, forefront of industry, taken ideas, turned them into businesses, and sold those businesses. And when you shine in this office, they hear you do something good for the company, you shine in the eyes of a CEO, you know, somebody who's really successful. And that 
is something that university graduates in the mailroom of some of the big companies could only, could only dream of you know, having happen. So uh, I'll tell you another another good thing. Uh, uh, yeah, it's about increased responsibility. That's the, the best part about it. There is uh, there's another good thing about startup companies is that they don't really require a GPA. <laughs> so I don't have the best GPA. I'm in a very tough program. But you know what? They don't really care about that. It's not it's not about that. It's about the way you present yourself. It's about the responsibility you want to un you want to undertake, <laughs> and it's how you want to get the job done. Now, another thing that doesn't require a GPA is starting a business for yourself. And I encourage you guys, if you have ideas, get out there and, and, and explore them, do some research, start talking about them, get feedback, you know? There's, there's never been a better time to start a business with cloud computing and free online accounting software and a host of other resources that are available to you, like the Dobson Center for Entrepreneurial Studies, the Office of Technological Transfer. Ask me about these after, I'd be glad to tell you about them. There's never been a better time to start a business. Now, I know I've started a couple businesses in the past few years that have failed miserably. <laughs> the first business I started was promoting bars and clubs to my 18-year-old friends in Philadelphia. Now, many of you know that the drinking age in Philadelphia and in the rest of the United States is 21. Now, what a brilliant idea that I had. <laughs> the other business that I tried to start was an internet marketplace geared towards college students with an emphasis on swapping and bartering textbooks. Now, I still think that this is a great idea, but I read about it in a complete wrong way, and I lost passion for the project, you know? I didn't do enough research, I didn't consider my competition, and the, the revenue model that I had planned for was, was to get a bunch of people to come to my website, and then I'd sell advertising on the website. That doesn't even work these days. You cannot get funding, you almost cannot get funding for any project that has that as their business plan. Now, but, but the thing is, I did fail, I know that I failed, but. But it was, it was an invaluable experience. You know, I encourage you to, to, to try this. And you probably will fail a bunch of times in your life, but it's important to know how to fail. And it's important to make mistakes because no matter what, you will learn from them. And that's something that, that, that's really invaluable. Now, I know what you're thinking, and I'm saying this is a great time to start a business, but it is the recession, right? Uh, well, yeah, I'm sorry, by the way, you have to take risks, right? This is, <laughs> and, and it is a recession, it is a recession, and I feel like I should whisper that word. It's almost like saying uh, Lord Voldemort. <laughs> With the recession, and, and, and banks aren't lending, venture capital is scarce, you know, markets are shrinking, but I'll tell you right now, there has never been a better time for you to start a business. So many people are getting laid off and they're starting their own businesses. So many people don't want to have their destiny in the hands of the man. Well, these people want young and motivated and ambitious people like you to come. You are the, you are the minds of tomorrow. And so I encourage you to go talk to these people and share your ideas because they want to hear what you have to say. Now, there is a degree of uncertainty to startup companies. And it, it's almost, it almost can be thought of as a frontier. <coughs> And I like to think of this as a frontier, and it's reminiscent to me of the frontier thesis that was put forth by Frederick Jackson Turner. And what he says in this thesis is, is essentially that it's in human nature to want to expand, to explore, to sail uncharted waters. And that's really what I see as startup companies. You know, whether you're bringing a new idea to the world, whether you're bringing an old idea to, a, to, to the developing world, or whether you're making something for cheaper, you know, it, it, it's a frontier. And it's exciting. And you have to have the guts to, to try something new. You have to have the courage to fail. And you have to be able to roll with the punches while you're there. But I'll tell you this, you will never, ever be bored. Now, th th it's this frontier. And, and, and if people say that, you know, uh, quote to quote Star Trek. I know Jan spoke about Star Trek a little bit. The, the, the space, space is the final frontier. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that I think that it's startup companies. And I urge you, I urge you as students to get out there and to zealously explore them because you will not regret it and your learning will be fantastic. Thank you.